Welcome. Okay, hang on. Let me change the screen. Tonight's right. topic for our Weeknight with Wonder Girls is on the journey to the White Continent, Antarctica. And we have a very special guest for Poseidon Expeditions who will be here with us in a short while. But before we go into the topic proper, we just like to share a quick video with everyone here for you to enjoy. Where will your spirit of adventure lead you next? Embark on one of our expedition ships for the experience of a lifetime. The journey of your dreams with Poseidon Expeditions. Imagine yourself in the polar realm, face to face with nature and wildlife in their most natural, pristine state. To Antarctica, the seventh continent, or to South Georgia with their extraordinary penguin colonies and ice-covered landscapes. Or up north, to the Arctic, to the majestic fjords and glaciers of Greenland. Or to the Franz Josef Land Archipelago, a new frontier in polar expedition cruising that very few travelers have yet experienced. Or Svalbard, rich in the history of the heroic era of exploration, walruses and polar bears, and volcanic Iceland, the undisputed kingdom of fire and ice. Join us and celebrate your next amazing life experience in the polar world of Poseidon Expeditions. Whoa, sounds so okay. exotic. <laughs> so exciting, huh? Eh? Yeah, that's a very good introductory video. Okay, before we proceed further, in case you have the annoying captions on your screen, which you like to turn off, you may follow these uh steps on how to actually turn off your auto caption just click on the image as you can see above and then click on the setting button at the bottom and just turn off your captions okay so i'm gonna just give you a brief introduction on our guest and then after that we'll bid farewell to cheryl who will be off uh you know offline while our guests come online to share about her experiences so our guest speaker for tonight is Sylvie Chen. She has traveled to more than 60 countries and is a Mandarin, English and French speaking polar expedition staff. So she has been working with many different expedition teams as a Mandarin staff as well as a team trainer. Okay, so say goodbye to Cheryl. Bye bye. I will stay at the background and enjoy Sylvie's presentation and I'll see you at the end of uh, today's session. See you later. See you. Okay, and welcoming on board. Now we have Sylvie. Hi, hello everyone. Hi, hi uh, everyone in Singapore. Okay. Hi, Mabel. <laughs> I will bring on your presentation slide. Okay, over to you, Sylvie. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sylvie. Uh, it's very nice. I have the the chance to share my one of my best travel destination with you guys. So right now, when you see me, that's how if, if we got the chance to be on in Antarctica or in Arctic one day, you will see me like this. I hope my face will be still the same. <laughs> so this is just my small background. And then earlier, Marvel already mentioned about that. And I have to say like, uh, I have been lost my job for two years because the <laughs> pandemic yeah so first of all i want to share everyone because many people ask me like sylvie why you like to work in antarctica and arctic and then why you always try to promote this uh, destination i have to say like uh, i really love it and then even you know you cannot stop people try to discover uh, the new territory. So if we cannot stop people desire to a new place, I would like to educate everyone how to enjoy that place. And first of all, I want to, because I have been working in different team, expedition team, and I saw lots of, uh, how to say, I saw lots of company that didn't really follow the rule. So that's why I, I really happy Travel Wonder gave me the chance to share what kind of attitude we need to have to go to the Antarctica and the Arctic polar region, and also to show like a really professional company 
to you. So first of all, Poseidon Expedition is uh, the company I work, one of the company I work with. And even now I still work with them because I really like them. And they haven't been uh, 21 years in Arctic and Antarctica. I have to say they started from operated uh, polar region tour to North Pole. They are like a two of the company around the world who can operate the tour to North Pole. And then on the left side, you can see the blue small ship. That's the one we use for Arctic and Antarctica. And the red one, that's the one for North Pole. And then also before I started to introduce Antarctica, I also like to share with everyone once like why it's, it's really like a, when you decide to go to the polar region or any trip, related to nature. I really hope everyone can choose either the travel agency or the operator. They are the responsible company. Like they really follow the, the rule to the nature and then they know how to protect them. Because I have to say, I just had a baby <laughs> during the COVID time. And then I hope my baby, they can, my, my kids, they can see what I have seen in polar region when they grew up, because everyone knows the global warming and also lots of people, they, they don't know about the rule. And then when they travel to those uh, remote places, they make some damage to the nature. So that's why I would like to use this chance to share the idea to everyone. And all those pictures just showing like uh, the company I work with, we definitely try to give more good idea. Like uh, on board, we will show we have lots of presentation and then we teach you how to how to check the animal behavior when you visit them because we are the guests animal they are the the main host there and also this is more like in arctic we will try to clean up the the beach and also in antica we will tell you like what not to bring and then what to enjoy in the, the mother land and also we have to protect the, the nature a lot so all this thing it's very important before you decide to go to the polar region because we really don't want any tourist to to make more damage to antarctica and arctic so the smaller ship means a smaller footprint and it's not only about all these things like a water management or like a west management it's more the main idea is uh, to be the responsible tourist and then to choose uh, the company who really try to make some uh, like a, try to protect the nature mostly i will stop my the most important thing today so lots of people say like, uh, oh, Sylvie, you have to been to Antarctica many times and then you work for a different company. Can you tell us which company is the best one to choose with? I have to say it really depends on what you want to have in your journey, in your trip, for your experience. I have to say like on the ship or before, before uh, like uh, I'm in Taiwan right now and then I did lots of travel sharing for the travel agency and i met some of the tourists some of the guests they asked me like oh sylvie i always take the uh, cruise tour and then i really want to have a michelin restaurant on the ship because that's the ship i usually take and i say hmm you want a michelin three-star restaurant in antarctica series is not necessary if you really wanted that kind of gourmet experience, it's better you take the ship to Mediterranean or to Caribbean island, but not come to Antarctica because that's way too difficult. So it, but I have to say, they do have a, that kind of ship provide the mission restaurant on board. But to me, it's really not necessary. There's one thing very, very important for you to know about, if you forget about uh, what I'm talking about today, you really have to remember. For the IATO, by law, they provide the member agreeing to have each landing site. You are not allowed to have a more than 100 passenger on board. And you might tell me like, Sylvie, 100 passenger? The ship I'm taking, they, they, they have like 3,000 tourists in one time. And now you're telling me like, a, you are not allowed to have more than 100 people on the landing site. Yes. So you can see this sign, IATO, 
you can download it from your cell phone. There's an app, Ayato app. It's a very good uh, an app, and also the website you can choose. You can see lots and lots of rules, and then also lots of uh, discrimination for the lending side. And then there's a lot of information on this website, and then from their app, you can download it. And then because this organization is to protect all the tourists not to make more damage to the to Antarctica. So for this, not more than 100 uh, guests in the landing, same landing site, this kind of rule is try not to let too many people at the landing site to make more damage. So again, most of the ship, they will have like 2,000, 3,000 people, especially the big ship in, in Asia right now. But you have to know to the Antarctica, most of the ship, right now in the market it's about 200 passengers even they are like super big ship they still cannot have a more than like 200 passenger some ship they have a more than 350 uh guests i telling you that's so even it's a doesn't matter how how much the price is they could be the super luxury one they could be the cheap one but no matter what for this role, don't take that kind of cruise because you couldn't even see any animal. You are not allowed to do any landing. But the ship between uh, 140 to 200 people, this kind of ship, you, you are allowed to do landing, uh, landing at the landing site, but you have to take turn. So for the first 100 passenger, they go to the landing site and the rest of 100 people, you know what they do. If the expedition team has enough staff, then they will have someone doing the presentation for you on board. But if they don't have enough expedition team staff on board, then you just do everything by yourself. And for the each landing site, normally we will have a three, uh, like six hour for operation. But once you divide your guests to two group, it means each group only have 19 minutes and then you might say like uh, uh, sylvie then what other two three hour why they disappear because for the landing when we arrange people go to the landing site we need some operation time so when you minus those operation time for the 200 people uh ship each passenger they only have a one hour to 19 minutes they can stay at the landing side but if you are taking the ship it's a smaller ship around 100 people then we guarantee everyone go to the landing side at the same time and then you can stay there for like a three hour and then you might ask me another question saying like sylvie i think it's really cold there three hour at the landing side i will be freezing i don't want to stay that long I'm telling you, once you go on the landing side and then you saw that many animals there, you will say like, wow, you know what? Based on my experience, doesn't matter which country you came from, people are selfish. <laughs> once, they, once they are there, they saw so many cute animals, especially penguin, they forget about, they have to come back. They will just stay there forever. So for us, someone who, who worked there, we always have to remember, oh, these 10 people, they already stay at the landing site for more than uh, like two hours. We have to ask them to come back because if we didn't send back 100, uh, 10 people from the landing site, we are not allowed to ship another 10 guests from the ship. So every time, the first day, the group A, which those 100 uh, passenger the group a they delayed the second day when we take turn we will send the group b the other 100 people go to the landing site they will be also late so it's always like a bad uh, how to say it, like circle like a, uh they say okay yesterday the group a those 100 people they are late coming back then why we have to be on time so it's always like that doesn't matter which country so i have to say your money to antarctica is how much time you spend in Antarctica, like at the landing site. Yeah. Definitely not spend in the in your cabin. So that's why. What's the point that you choose the uh, the ship has a Michelin restaurant, right? And what's the um, reason you, if you really want to enjoy the cabin, 
then you can just stay home and then watch the animal channel, you know, or like discovery channel. It's more, even more uh, comfortable, right? So super important. By IATO law, they are not allowed more than 100 people going to the landing site at the same time. This is very important. So always choose smaller ship to Antarctica. For Arctic, doesn't have this uh, issue. But for Antarctica, they have this issue. So, so how to choose a uh, ship? I think Travel Wonder will also share their idea with you. Smaller ship is definitely better. And then this, I want to share everyone, like what's the best season going to Antarctica and polar region. So this is more like a general information. You have you go to the polar region when that area is in summer. So you will see for the North Pole is of July and August. They only have those two months open to tourists. And then the ship is a 50 year victory, which is this uh, black and red. This is a super nuclear power uh, ship. But for the Antarctica and Arctic, you will see for the Arctic is from May to September. It's covered summer, so it's from the spring, summer, and autumn. Depends on which uh, country, which area you go, because the Arctic is a sea, it's an ocean. It's, an, it's covered by different country, like a surrounded by different country. So it really depends on which area you go, you see different things. For example, during the autumn time, like the uh, end of October, uh, end of August, September, and then early October, you can see northern light in Greenland, or you can go to Swampa for the polar bear. And for Antarctica, we started from October to next March. So right now it's the Antarctica season. So if you want to go to Antarctica, it's definitely in between October and March, which is uh, summertime uh, in Antarctica. And I have to say like, um, it's not like you are not allowed to go to Antarctica in other months. It just that period of time only open to scientists because they have to do lots of science. And plus it's all dark. You know, some of the people, they say like, Sylvie, your life is full of lighting, full of sun. We are chasing the sun. Why? Because before when I really work in the uh, polar region, from May to September, I mean, working in Arctic. And then I will have a one month break. Either I travel around or come back to Taiwan. And then during the October, from October, I will go to Antarctica. So it's always a, a sunny day there. So it's always a light. So I, I say like my, my lifestyle is very bright because it's always bright, no dark. Yeah. And then I want to introduce in Antarctica right now, uh, we have a two major um, program. Doesn't matter which uh, expedition company you join or which travel agency you, you join. Basically in Antarctica, we offer two program. The first one is a shorter trip. Normally, it's around 10 days to 13 days. It depends on each different company. They offer different dates. And then it's a Ushua from Ushuaia, travel around and back to Ushuaia. The other one is a longer trip, which is from Buenos Aires to Falkland Island to South Georgia and then Peninsula Antarctica and then end up in Ushuaia. And this trip will last about 21 days to 24 days, depends on different expedition team. The other one is from Ushuaia, like uh, the other style, like Ushuaia and the Peninsula, South Georgia, Falkland Island, and then up to Buenos Aires. So nobody, this trip will be a end of the season. So what's the difference between those two trips in Antarctica? For the short trip, Ushuaia in and out, you will see mostly those two penguins, this one, chin strap, and then this one, June 2. Because many guests, they say like, uh, oh, I go to Antarctica, I can see all the penguins in one time. Sorry, it's not true. <laughs> if any travel agency or any friend telling you like uh, going to one time in Antarctica, you can see everything. That person definitely not been to Antarctica yet. For the short trip, you can see those two 
it's not okay i wouldn't say like 100 percent, but 99 percent, you will see chin strap and the drink two those two colony sometimes you will see also this one she has a blue eye this from the picture you cannot tell blue eye this is adelaide so those three this one this one those three penguin you can see from the show trip which is uh, Ushuaia in and out but if you join the longer trip which will go to Falkland Island and South Georgia you will see rock hopper very evil looking penguin and then also king uh, king penguin and then this is the chicks for king penguin it looked like kiwi really giant kiwi later you will see from the picture and also you might have a chance to see macaroni penguin and rest of the like a uh, uh, emperor penguin sorry you you cannot really see it you have to fly into antarctica that's a different trip in the regular antarctica trip with a ship you cannot see uh emperor penguin uh so that's another traveling style in the future if uh, you guys interested and then we can arrange with the travel wonder <laughs> we can share for how to see emperor penguin so again it's not all the penguin you can see one time in your antarctica trip so before you go it's really like i think most of people only been to like their dream is on being to antarctica once so if you have a uh, enough budget and then if you have a travel uh, longer holiday i would strongly recommend just go to the longer trip which is uh, falkland island south georgia and then peninsula especially south georgia that's the best place you will see the king penguin because it's the largest colonized you colony you can see king penguin there and later i will share a lot of picture with you so you will see like a wow why people when they go on the landing side they don't want to leave they just want to stay there forever and then which is uh, create a lot of problem for the for us yeah and you can see this is just show like how tiny each penguin how what the size they are so you will see like emperor penguin is the largest one in the in among all the penguins and then for the emperor again you have to fly into antarctica it's a different uh, traveling style but for the king penguin you are allowed you you have the chance i i will also say like 99 percent you will have a chance if you join the longer trip and for the regular short-term trip you will see adelaide and then this one is the gene two and also the chin strap so before I go into like what you can see in Antarctica and what you what you can do in Antarctica, the second important thing is when you are there, you have to keep social distance. Like right now, like right now, all the government try to ask people to to keep social distance, right? In Antarctica, you also have to keep social distance, which is five meter to all the animals, because again, we are the guests in Antarctica those animals they are the host so if we go into someone's house we try to be polite we don't want to you know affect their lifestyle so we really ask our guests we we will not have a line to measure like if it's really five meter or not but we really expect our our guests they know the rule so again keep social distance at least five meter to all the animals very important so I will start with a short trip, which is uh, in and in and out from Ushuaia. Uh, why I'm start with a short trip is most of people, most of the guests I know, they don't really have enough uh, holidays, and then some of them they didn't have, uh, they didn't do any research. So when people say like, "Oh, I want to go to Antarctica," the first time they Google it, they will join the short trip because that's a. Uh, uh, biggest market right now the the mass market right now in the tra traveling into polar region so most of the uh friends and the most of the travel agency they are selling will be selling the show trip because when you're traveling from asia 
doesn't matter Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, China, Hong Kong, when you fly to Antarctica, if it's about 17 days to 19 days, usually means you only go to the show trip. Yeah, because 19 days is quite long for the holiday, right? So that's why people choose a show trip. But show trip, it means uh, related to one question, because some of the guests, they say, oh, Sylvie, you, earlier you mentioned the traveling season in Antarctica is from October to next March. So when is the best time to go to Antarctica between those uh, months? I have to say, again, it really depends on what you want to see, what you want to have in your experience. For example, this, they are like a calling, right? So it could be they are calling their partner. It also could be they're calling their chicks, their baby. So normally, this picture is calling their partner. So if you want to have a, this kind of picture, you have to come early in the season because early in the season, they came on the landing side. And then first of all, they have to find their partner. For the penguin, all their life, they only love one penguin. So they are not like uh, switch their partner. So once they come back, they were like uh, calling each other. I'm here, I'm here, come to find me. So once they found their partner, see, they were like happy together, try to find a place to, to do the nest. So they have their home and then try to raise their baby. So for this kind of like lovely picture, they love each other or like this one, can you tell what they are doing? They are making. <laughs> this picture I took right is from my cell phone. So it's not really good quality. Yeah. So this picture is uh, 2000, I think it's 2017, when we just arrived at the landing site. I was with uh, one Mandarin speaking guest. And then right away, I saw this happen. So I was like uh, calling my guest, saying like, come here, come here, you can see the making. Well, I cannot really yelling to everyone. During the, at the landing site, we have a radio, right? But I didn't call my colleague and telling them this uh, making a uh, picture here because once too many people they too many children they come together the penguin they will get shocked yeah so i just call the mandarin speaking guest around me and say like look look so if you want to have this kind of picture then you have to come early in the season which is before december before mid-december i have to say before mid-december you can see all this happen again it's not circus they are not training for this for you guys. So I just had you have a better chance to see what this happened before mid December. Do you know what the chain spread what this one doing? He he has a stone in her mouth. Like in his mouth. It's a little stone because they have to pick the stone from the beach side. And then they will like a dong 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 climb up to the hill and then nest. They put down all the small stone and then nest uh, his place for the future penguin, for the future baby. So if you want to have a, this kind of nesting picture, then you also have to come before, like early in the season. And then for the, the penguin, they usually live with each other. They don't live individually. So you can see the colon, colony, right? So it's like a people. You have a smarter people. You also have a not smarter people. So the penguin is also the same. So the, for the smarter penguin, when they're never going to the beach side to pick up the stone, he will just go to his place to keep, pick up his stone and then steal the, someone's stone from their neighbor. So it's very like uh, tricky and uh, sneaky. Yeah, so if you want to have that picture before mid-December. But some of the guests, they told me, Sylvie, but I really like a, a baby penguin. I want to see them. So if you want to see the baby penguin, doesn't matter what they are doing. You just want to see the baby. Then you have to come end of December. So from end of December, January, February, you had the chance to see the all the animal baby. Yeah. So for this, you have to come. Like this one is a feeding. The mother is, was feeding the, the quail to the baby penguin. For this kind of picture, it's better you come end of December. Yeah, you had a better chance to find this picture. And also, 
if you really some of the guests when they come to Antarctica in January, because January is a, like super busy season, it's a peak season because you can see the maximum amount of all the animal because you can see adult, you can also see the chick. Yeah, but they say, Sylvie, why is it so like it's, it doesn't look like a white continent anymore. Earlier, we were saying like Antarctica is white continent, right? I have to say in January, it's summertime already. It's, it's really like a temperature is quite high in Antarctica. So most of the snow, they got melted already. So during the, at the landing site, most of you will see like a really like muddy, like this, really muddy, or like a, just like this, quite dirty. So if you are the person who like to have a landscape, like beautiful white continent landscape picture, I will also uh, suggest you come early in the season because early in the season, especially in October, November, pretty much uh, the snow is still there at the landing site. And then you can have a really beautiful picture. So again, it really depends on what you want to see in Antarctica. You want to see more animals, then it's better you come in January and December. If you like to see more white continent and a, like a landscape, that kind of picture, then it's better you come early, like super early, October or November. If you want to see um, penguin they're making, if you prefer to see that kind of picture, then it's higher chance you come uh, like a big before mid December, so it really depends on what you want to see, and then decide which month you choose your tour, you choose your trip. And if you want to see like a more whale, whale watching, then I have to say February. That's the best time for whale watching because it's more whale, different type of whale, and the more amount, the uh, larger amount of whale coming to uh, Antarctica around end of January and also February and early March, that's the time. And then in February, there's another thing is, in February, that's the time they prepare themselves going back to the ocean after the season. So they have to change their fur. So before they have to change the new new fur. So during the change, fur changing time, it's not waterproof anymore. So they cannot go to the, uh, go inside the water for the feeding, they cannot find their food because they are not waterproof. So during the uh, February time, it's about two weeks. It doesn't matter if it's from uh, February 1st to February 14th or 14 to 30. It's not like that. It's just uh, in between. There's about two weeks. All the penguin and all the animal, they will change their fur. So during that time, they have they cannot eat anything. So there's they will become very aggressive. So usually in February, we don't really suggest you, when you take picture, we don't suggest you to sit down. Because first of all, it's too dirty anyway, because it's really muddy. And second, because once you, because they are aggressive animals, so once you kind of like a, didn't read their behavior properly, you might get attacked. Well, I have to say we are the guest. So we usually, we will teach you how to read their behavior. But again, we hope you don't disturb them. So, so it's not really dangerous, but we still suggest you to be pay more attention for how they behavior in February. Yeah. And this is uh, two different penguins. You can see Jin Tu and the chin strap. They usually live with each knee, uh, next to each other. I don't know why. It's just like a, many times you can see those two penguins, they are quite get along with each other. Yeah, but other penguins, they will just stay with their own group. So it's not only different penguins you can see in different different trip of in, in Antarctica. There's also different type of seal. So. Before we go in there, lots of people, they didn't know, lots of guests, they didn't know, like a seal, they have a, some of them have ear, some of them they doesn't have a ear. So this one has, is a fur seal, has a tiny little bit ear here. It's very cute. But other seal, like widow here, they don't have a, any ear. So we have about seven different, seven different type of whale 
uh, to several different type of seal you can see in Antarctica. So it's not like a penguin. I can tell you exactly which area you can see a different type. For the seal, they are very lazy and then they don't really stay in one place. So no matter what, you have a chance to see seven different types, but I cannot really tell you like which type you, you will like uh, see mostly. Yeah. And then again, you will have a chance to see different whale. Mostly is humpback whale. That is uh, the most of the time you will, you will see the humpback whale. It's not only during the uh, cruising, but also like we will, on the way to the landing site, you might also have the chance to see it. Like this, I have to say at that time, it was 2018, February. It's also, I took this picture from my cell phone. At that time, this is humpback whale, but this is a, a killer whale. At that time, we were like, we saw a whole bunch of killer whale. They are chasing other lake penguins and they were killing, like chasing only one tiny little uh, Adelaide. And then, oh, that, that was really cruel. And then after they eat, Adelaide. They were just like playing with our ship. So you will see like uh, right now it's four kilo whale, but there's other other I think that day was like twenty something kilo whale with us. They are very to me they are very beautiful. Yeah. So end of the season you will see mostly the, the whale. And then again, so for the guests that really like to take the picture when the whale like jumping. So if you can take the picture, the tail, so you can log into the Happy Whale app website, and then you can because their uh, pattern is like a, a handprint, our fingerprint. So each one has a different uh, pattern. So you can see if the Happy Whale already got the the whale you took the picture. Of course, you can see different birds, but I have to say I'm really bad with uh, different birds. It's not my expertise. Yeah, I have a terrible vision. Some we do have a, a professional. My colleague they are really good with uh, different uh, birds, so they will have a, a, a lecture on board. And this is king uh, king penguin. So you will see this at South Georgia. Yeah, did you see this one? This one is a king penguin baby here. It look like a big kiwi, right? So again, Sylvie, you say we are not allowed to get close to any animal. We have to keep the social distance five meter. But how come this picture, it looks like we are inside the, the colony? You know what? The reason why I suggest everyone, if you have enough budget, you have a, a longer holiday, go to the long trip which is covered South Georgia and the Falkland Island, it's because they got too many uh, animals. Once you go on the landing side, there's no way you can keep distance. It's, it's like that, more than thousand animals there. Like it's really like very close. You just uh, like put your thing, you just like uh, put your arm like this, you can touch them already. Okay, it's not allowed, but it's that close to all the animals, see? So it's not like it, it's not like we didn't want to keep the rule. It's because there's too many animals there. It's really difficult to keep the five meter uh, social distance. See. So we will introduce all this uh, at the landing site to everyone to our guest. And. This is a penguin highway. You will see here, penguin highway. That's a time, usually you will see this early in the season because you can see a lot of snow. In January, normally those snow, they are it's already melting. So you wouldn't see it. You will only see the muddy place. But the beginning of season, you will see like a penguin, they go down to the seaside. They follow this uh, penguin highway to the seaside and they pick up the food or pick up the uh, small stone and then walk back to their net, to their home. Yeah, and normally when we see this, we ask our uh, our guests, you do not step on that because people, we are quite heavy. Once you step on those uh, penguin highway, you make deeper to the penguin highway. So the tiny little penguin, when they walk on the penguin highway, they would like uh, 
you know, they will fall down because it's not even. So do you just cross them? You don't step on top of it. Yeah. Again, keep social distance at least five meter to all the animals. That's very important. So earlier, that's uh, you will see the penguin. You will see a different penguin. Depends on which journey you choose. If you have a short -term trip, I have to tell you, sorry, you are about to see two type of penguin, which is chin strap, and then chin two. Maybe you will see the blue eye, tiny little blue eye, and the black hat, adult. But if you have enough budget, you have a longer trip. Strongly recommend go to King Penguin Colony, which is uh, South Georgia. And then during the long trip, you are not only to see King Penguin, you can also see the uh, like a macaroni penguin and also the rock hopper penguin. And of course, include the, those three chin strap and the uh, gene two and other legs. So you will see about at least five to six different penguins if you join the longer trip. Okay, so that's a two trip difference. And then also, except all, th all those animals, what can you do in Antarctica? First of all, you will see this is zodiac. So normally we take eight to 10 passengers in one zodiac. We use it as a shuttle. So from the bigger ship, we was use this as a shuttle, send you to the landing site. So again, why we say like uh, each landing site, they don't allow 100 people. Uh, more than 100 people on the landing side because each time we are only allowed like uh, 8 to 10 passenger with a Zodiac. So it takes time, I have to say, it takes time to switch to put all the our guests to the landing area. So it, it will take about 30 minutes to 40 minutes to send 100 passenger to the landing side. That's why even though the cruise company or the expedition company, they have a six hour operating time for this landing site, but you minus one hour to 90 minutes for operating, really you don't have a much time left for the passenger, for your guest. So if you have a 200 people, you have to divide into two group. Each group really only have a like a 60 minutes to 90, uh, 90 minutes. I have to say one time I was working for the company, which is 200 passenger. I feel so sorry for the last three Zodiac. So the, for the last three Zodiac passenger, I, I tell them, sorry, now it's 11. You have to come back within 14 minutes because previous, like earlier, those uh, other passenger, they already got delayed. So we really don't have enough time for the last three Zodiac passenger. So they only have a 40 minutes, four zero. It's really sad. You pay the same amount of money, but you, your traveling time is so short. And then you have, I, again, I have to say most of money you pay is really how long you stay at the beautiful landing site. It's definitely not staying at your cabin and then all the room service. Yeah. So always choose a smaller ship. Of course, smaller ships also have a luxury one, I have to say. So again, 100, around 100 people, that's the best uh, number for the, for the landing. And this is also, we have a two landing in Antarctica. This is called dry landing, which is not normal. Dry landing is like a regular uh, cruise. You just go at the landing site like this. But most of the time in Antarctica or in Arctic, it's wet landing which is like this. You really have to have, a, that's the reason why we ask our passenger to have a, everything waterproof. Waterproof parka, we will give everyone for free. The red color one is the one for free. And then you have to have a, your own waterproof pants and also waterproof cloth. And the backpack also have to be waterproof because this is the situation you have at each landing site. You have to step into the, the, the sea. And did you see the girl here? This is like me. This is my position. I always stand in there and waiting, welcome everyone come to the landing site. Yeah. So during the cruising time, you will see like beautiful iceberg, different type of iceberg. And also you have the chance to see the animal. Sometimes they are like a swimming and sometimes they were like jumping around 
on the iceberg. Yeah. So even just during the cruising, that's a time. And sometimes you will see the a whale. So we will stop. Let you take picture for sure. And then at the landing site, we also do some uh, lecture. It, well, it's not it's not lecture. It's more like a really short um, speaking. We will tell you uh, what you can see here. But I have to say we did most of the lecture on board because once we go to the landing site, it's the animal's home. So we try to keep quiet. We don't use microphone. We don't do yelling. So we do most of the uh, presentation and lecture on board on the ship. But sometimes we might do some small lecture at the landing site, but it's really not common. Yeah, this is because it's a uh, Falkland Island. Falkland Island is not only animal. It's also like uh, because they were fighting with the British. Argentina was fighting with a, a British com a government. So those UK and the Ar Argentina, when they were fighting, so in Falkland Island, you can see some uh, landing site. They have some uh, cannons. They have some cultural things to see. So we will do some presentation there like this. And then some of the landing site, they have a uh, trail. So you can walk on it to the to see the penguin. This is a rock hopper penguin colony. But most of the landing sites like this, you're walking on the stone. Yeah. So we have a lot of hiking, but you don't have to worry because as soon as you can walk, even with a sticker, as soon as you can walk, you don't have to worry about uh, the act activity in Antarctica. It's very safe. And then again. For the company I work mostly, like Poseidon, we have a 114 passenger. But because we always have a 16 passenger going to kayaking, so we kind of like guarantee more, uh, less than 100 people going to landing site at the same time. So usually we spend at the, like three hours, at least two hours at the landing site. So you can really discover the landing site because it's very big. It's not like a a small place. Sometimes you have to walk ac uh, across the hill in order to see the penguin colony, like this. So the landing site is down here. So you have to walk up to the top and then cross uh, the hill, and then you will see the chin strap colony at the other side of the island. So you have to walk, and then you will see like some passengers, some guests, they feel so hot that they don't want to wear a parka anymore. So it's like a small exercise, but not difficult, not difficult. And then if you say, oh, Sylvie, it's too hot, I want to have a break. Of course, you can have a break. Yeah, you don't have to, once you're at the landing site, it's your free time. So that's why it's better you have enough time there. Yeah, have to say 90 minutes, one hour is really not enough. See, you can see this is Paradise Bay. The landing site, you came up here, and then you have to walk up to the hill. And again, lots of Asian uh, passengers, they like to use a big stand, like a, a tripod. I have to say, like, uh, when you have a really big tripod, please, you hold it like this. Because sometimes, try to be cool, you will just hold your uh, tripod like this. It's so dangerous, because once you move, Either you hit your uh, friends or you hit the king penguin. Yeah, so it's very dangerous. We don't really ask you to do that. So. And then you will see the cruising. You will see the hiking. And then we will do some uh, presentation on the landing side. And then uh, you have your own uh, free time at the landing side. And we also offer kayaking. And strongly recommend. I really love kayaking in Antarctica or Arctic. But I have to say, this is definitely not the place you have your first time kayaking. You came here to enjoy, but you have to have at least one time experience. Yeah, at least one time. This Antarctica is not a place for you to practice your kayaking skill. No, it's dangerous. Yeah, but it's very fun if you have an experience in other place already, then I would strongly recommend join the kayaking team. Because it's a really different angle 
when you look at the animal from the uh, seaside, it's just like way different. And sometimes when you do kayaking, the seal just like uh, playing with you. Like they were like uh, swimming around your kayak. You might think like a Sylvie, is that dangerous? No, it's not dangerous. Because again, we will be with you and then we, we will tell you like uh, what's their behavior. So you don't have to panic. You don't have to worry about it. Just like enjoy, enjoy. It's very fun. Yeah. And then not only camping, but also the, oh, not only kayaking, also the camping. We also offer uh, camping as an option. So kayaking and camping in most of the expedition team, you have to pay extra. You have to pay extra. And then the price is dependent on the different company. Yeah. The camping experience is also quite good. For the ki uh, kayaking, you pay one price. And then every day, as soon as we can offer kayaking, you can go. But for the camping, usually it's one time experience. I have to say, like, uh, uh, for the camping, more and more uh, guests, they don't want to stay in the tent. You know what, what they want? They just want to have a, a sleeping bag. They don't want any tent with them. They said, like, Sylvie, just give us a, a sleeping bag. And it's really funny experience because one time I was with a, a camping team at a camping site. Usually we will have a two to three expedition team member, staff, with our guest, because it's, it's only about 40, 40 uh, passenger, they have a chance to go to the camping. So we will have a, like a three to four staff with them spending overnight at a, a camping area. So you will go to the camping area after dinner. So it's about 10 p.m. We will send those uh, guests to the camping area. And the next day, we will bring you back. So you have to do your, if you want to go pee, if you want to use a washroom, you have to do it there. We will like set up the toilet for you. It's an open toilet. It's very fun. I never see any Asian guests that use it, but people going there for picture. I have to say it's a really fun experience. Um, you have to, you know what? You have to go there to see it by yourself, to use it by yourself. What's a chance you can do your pee pee in Antarctica, right? So the other time is when we woke up, we saw the chin strap. It's in, it's just like next to our sleeping bag. Don't worry, they won't bite you. Chin strap won't bite you. But it's just like when you wake up and you just saw, you just see the, the chin strap next to you. Yeah. But I cannot guarantee it just happened that time. It's very fun. Yeah. And then you can do the polar jumping. We always like the, our guests to polar jumping because they always do a lot of funny things. I have to say this one is Photoshop. <laughs> you will see the whale here. This is not true. There's no whale there. <laughs> so we will have a lot of competition, either jumping position competition or like they can dress up to do the jumping. Yeah. And if you don't have a US swimming suit with you, we are pretty open. You want to do naked? Good. Anyway, you don't know those three passengers, so I can show their picture <laughs> to you guys. Yeah, it's in Antarctica. It's a uh, hot spring in Antarctica. This area is a volcano area. So the water temperature is four degrees. It's already hot spring in Antarctica. So you have to walk into the inside the sea. So it's very like, uh, oh, they are brave. Yeah, it's really not easy. Yeah. And every time after the polar jumping, polar uh, swimming, I always ask uh, our guests to come back to the to the ship. This is a uh, sea spirit because we have the uh, jacuzzi on board. It's hot water jacuzzi. So I was like, just come back. Let's do the hot water jacuzzi together. Yeah. So see, it looked like uh, you are spending your holiday in Colorbean Island, but there's an iceberg behind it. So you can tell people, see, I did polar jumping in Antarctica. I have to say this is in Arctic because uh, some of the guests, they asked me, oh, Sylvie, what's the uh, oldest age and the youngest age in Antarctica and Arctic? I have to say like, uh, oh, oh, for the jumping, as soon as you don't have a heart attack, 
you don't have a any issue with your heart you don't have a diabetes you don't have a anything diff, uh, like you don't have any problem with your body you are allowed to do the polar jumping you know your body you know your health uh, condition uh, much better than us so we need you to be to be honest to your own situation otherwise everyone can join the uh, polar jumping yeah so this girl she's only seven years old at the beginning she was trying to jump in with her mom but after her mom jumping in the water it's also four degree and then the girl got checked out she didn't want to go and then after everyone jump she said like oh i want to do the polar jumping but the mother didn't want to do it anymore so auntie which is me jumping with her so my job at the end it's always taiwanese or like a, a mandarin speaking uh, guest they say selvi jumping with us so many times i jump with our guest yeah again in antarctica it's not only the animal or all those activity i think there's one thing i also like to share with everyone is i like to see people because when you come to antarctica or arctic lots of them they have a lot of story in their life because they are like a world traveler M lots of them they already travel more than 100 country most of the passenger most of the onboard guests i met them they have a lot a lot of traveling story so i like to talk with them and we also welcome you when you go on go to our come to our ship we always have a passenger from different country so you can share your uh, travel story with each other and then to me it's always to see like uh, all the different tourists they come to different uh, country and then i show them how to do the different photo because everyone was dressing up the same if you join poseidon you have a red color parka if you join other company you have a different colors parka so from the picture you will see everyone dressed like the same and i said like no once you take picture take off your clothes you know take off your clothes it's only one minute so you can have a like a different picture from anyone yeah see that's a taiwanese tour leader i show her how to do picture <laughs> so that was me and the taiwanese tour leader we will like take off our clothes to do lots of funny picture together yeah and we will do barbecue on board if it like it's super sunny i have to say if the normally in antarctica is not as cold as uh, you imagine uh if it's uh, like a uh, one degree and it's a sunny day trust me you will feel hot they go you only feel cold when it's a uh, uh, quite windy because it's wind chill yeah so otherwise in antarctica it's not that cold as uh, everyone thinking yeah. Oh, by the way, if you want to have a this kind of picture, that beautiful sunset, uh, yeah, you have to come early in the season because from end of December, January, beginning of February, you will only see like bright, bright sky. You will not see any color change. It will be always uh, the same color. But if you come in early in the season, which is uh, December, uh, sorry, October, November, or end of season, which is end of February, March, then you will see this beautiful color change because it's not summertime anymore. Yeah, see, it's really sunny. Uh, this guest inside, he only had a short, like polo short. Actually, right now you will see me like this, right? That's I'm dressing exactly the same. If you meet me on the in Antarctica, I'm like this with a polo short yeah and this is me on board so all our presentation is english but as we have a different uh we have a all different countries uh guests so we always have a, like german speaking staff and the russian speaking staff and the french speaking staff so we will have a translating machine so when the presentation is going in english we always have the translated like an uh, interpreter directly, yeah. So this is our team. So this is our welcome party. We also have a farewell party. And then on the, the ship, we will provide lots of presentation. And this is uh, a, like a training. 
presentations. So our colleague, either they are a uh, marine biologist or they are glacialist. So we have all different, um, my colleague from different background and they will provide a presentation, a professional presentation to all our guests, onboard guests. And I also sometimes I did my own presentation in Mandarin. And we have an open bridge policy. So 24 hours, you can come to our uh, captain area. So you will see like uh, how safe our operation. And also some of the guests, they really interested with uh, driving the cruise. So they want to know how we operate it. Yeah. And we will do some small lecture at the bridge as well. And then for all our staff, we have to uh, drive Rosiac for our for our guest. This is Sea Spirit, so it's really like a deluxe expedition team ship. And then we have a, like 114 passenger, and then around 13 expedition team member. And I have to say, like it's a very comfortable ship. You can see all our room is a uh, uh, suite. We don't have an inside cabin. All the cabin, all the room has a window or balcony. It depends on which one you choose. Yeah. And then also they all had a small living room, small living room area as the inside the cabin. I think you will see more this uh, with uh, Cheryl and the Marvel. They can share with you. Because I, I want to give everyone some free time to ask questions. And during the night time, after dinner, we will do some um, fun event at our bar area. So you are welcome to join us. Sometimes we have a karaoke. Sometimes we have a, like a, uh, our staff will teach us how to do some funny uh, events. And then we have some quiz, some game playing with our guests. Yeah, this is our bar area. We also have a small uh, gym so you can exercise. And you don't have to worry about to bring like instant noodle to the ship. No, our eating is really good. In the breakfast, we have an early breakfast, which is around six o'clock. So if you wake up early, you can have a fresh juice. You can have a, some small croissant, some cookie. And then the proper breakfast usually start from seven or seven thirty. And we have congee, Chinese food. So if you say like, oh, I want to have a, some hot congee during the morning, we have congee all the time. And then uh, it's an international buffet for you to choose. And during the lunchtime, because in the morning and the afternoon, we have a landing, we have activity. So the lunch, we also offer international buffet. But during the dinner time, we have a menu, but you can order as much as you can. So we have a, like soup and salad, we always have a vegetarian choice. So if you are the vegetarian, don't worry. We have a lot of choice for you. You don't have to uh, worry about you will only get salads. It's more than salads. Yeah. So we always have a, like, a vegetarian option. We have a, two different types of meat and then one seafood section, a seafood option. Yeah, so you can always have a, as much as you want. And then if you have a, some um like if you want the pork free you don't eat pork is also totally okay you just let us know us at the beginning and then in the afternoon after the afternoon landing when you come back to our ship we usually have a tea time so sometimes we offer sushi but most of the time we have a chef that were cooking a uh, french crab directly in front of everyone so you can put your topping ice cream yeah, so it's really nice. And then once you came on the on board, right away we will give you really hot, like hot chocolate or the tea. Yeah. And this is a parka we offer to everyone, to our guests. And if you came to Antarctica, of course you get the Antarctica. If you come to North Pole, you have the North Pole parka. And this one is definitely enough for you in polar region. You don't have to bring your own uh, big jacket. But first of all, Argentina airline, they have a like weight limit. Even you are taking business class, you are still having 16 
uh, kilo you can bring, which is really not enough for the people traveling from Asia. So you can just bring the, the jacket for you on the airplane. And then once you, so you come to Polo region, we will give you the, the big paka. And then for free, you can bring it home as a souvenir. Yeah. So we also show you, give you this patch. It's also for the souvenir. And then we offer the waterproof shoes, waterproof boots. This one you have to give back to us. You don't bring it back to Asia. And then after we clean, we will give to you the next uh, a trip. And this one you don't have to bring by yourself. It's quite heavy. So it's waterproof. So it's very useful. You don't have to bring your own waterproof uh, boots. See, everyone just wear shorts because inside the cabin is like, uh, like right now, I think all the department store or shopping mall, all the air condition in Asia is much colder than Antarctica, our ship. Yeah. Of course, when you go to the landing site, sometimes with a wind chill, you might feel really cold. This is me. If it's really cold, you will see me dress up like this. Yeah. But most of the time, it's fine. As soon as you have uh, our parka, it's fine. Yeah. See? Most of the time, you will see me like this. Those two pictures are me in Antarctica. Yeah. So those are the things you can bring. So waterproof. This one is uh, my working pants. It's water uh resistance but this one is called uh cotas this one is a uh, water totally waterproof and you can bring one winter proof jacket before you can on board waterproof glove sunglasses definitely and the hat to cover your ear and the forehead don't wear the the hat which is really big beautiful no where the hat can cover your ear. That's most important things. And the waterproof backpack, two socks, two socks, because the waterproof uh, boots is waterproof, but you will feel cold, definitely. So you have to uh, wear two socks inside. And then also the swimming uh, suit. Well, if you don't want to bring swimming suit, it's fine. You can swim in naked with your mind. And forget about drone. We are not allowed guests to bring drone anymore. From 2016, Ayato, they already said, no, you are not allowed to bring drone to Antarctica and the Arctic. So don't bring. Remember to bring enough memory card and the battery because during the cold weather, Battery, they really like uh, uh, the, the, the power go away really fast. So again, it's also very important. I, I remind you for the 200 people ship, when you take turn, when you are at the landing site, sometimes we have a, uh, our guests tell me, Sylvie, my battery gone already. I really have to go back to ship to pick up the new battery. You know what? If you are at the 200 people ship, once I send you back to the ship, I'm not going to send you back to the landing site because I have to let another 10 people go into the landing site. So it's better you always have the, your battery full. You always have enough memory card. But if you join Sea Spirit, which is around 100 people at the landing site at the same time, you tell me like, oh, Sylvie, I forgot to bring my battery. No problem. We send you back, you can pick up your battery or go to the washroom even, and then we send you back to the landing site because all our guests are at the landing site. There's no one on the ship. We don't have to have any staff at the ship because uh, everyone is at the landing site because it's uh, less than 100 people. So that's also very important because sometimes when you feel cold, you will want to go to the washroom quick yeah and then all the landing site you are not allowed to bring a uh, food there's no toilet so you have to remember smaller ship has benefits smaller ship has benefits yeah so this is my presentation i try to keep uh uh in time finishing time so i hope during the 
presentation, you will remember, always keep social distance around five meters to all the animals. Second, Ayato, they not allowed more than 100 people at the landing site at the same time. So those two rules you have to remember. Even you forget about everything, those two things is very important for your trip. Yeah, so I hope I still have uh, some time for the guest if they don't understand. Yes, yes. Thank you very much for sharing your uh, presentation. Okay, we actually have a lot of questions from the guests out there, Sylvie. Okay. Yeah. So while well, let me uh while I go through the questions one by one, I'm gonna just show a video in the background for everybody who's curious to know more about the the Sea Spirit cruise ship that Sylvie has been, you know, uh, mostly I work on this. highly about. Yeah, that's right. But Sylvie, I have a question for you first before I touch on the questions by the audience, because yeah. you mentioned earlier on that you joined a few expedition teams before right so i'm yeah. actually very curious what made you decide you know that poseidon expedition is the okay the, the company that you want to stick with okay it's very important because for us why the reason why we want to work in polar region because we i like it i have to say i really enjoy working in arctic and arctic and then for us our job is also traveling i want to have fun so I don't want to spend on the landing side. Uh, I don't want to spend on board to do work as well. So normally, if uh, like before, when I uh, when I join two hundred people ship, I have to say because no matter what, we still have uh, some Asian uh, guests. They are like Mandarin speaking. Doesn't matter from which country. So if I was at the two hundred people ship, I cannot always go to the landing side because sometimes I have to stay mm. on board and then to to do the translation or to do my own lecture but if i join the 100 people ship i can always spend my time at the landing site i can also enjoy as a you know tourist so that's the main reason i like to work smaller ship but why what's the main reason i work with uh, poseidon is because i have to say i saw uh, during the last five years uh i was working as a trainer for Mandarin speaking team because I was training some new Mandarin speaking staff in different uh, company. I have to say some company, mm -hmm. expedition company or cruise company, they don't usually come to polar region. Like polar region is just uh, maybe for the entire year, they only have a two to four trip in this region. But Poseidon, they only do Arctic, Antarctica and North Pole. You can tell they only focus on polar region. They don't go to any other uh, ocean. They didn't go to Mediterranean. They didn't go to Caribbean Island. They didn't go to Galapagos. They only focus on polar region. So it's not only the expedition team. They are really professional. My colleague, they are so professional for the polar region, but also the captain. So the expedition team leader, the captain, we are used to, uh, we, we can, really if something happened in polar region we know right away like my my leader they know right away how to you know to make new plans for our guests but when i was at the the team which is not that professional because they've been to they, they the entire year they go to different place antarctica is just like a short term i have to say sometimes when the weather got changed even the expedition leader they didn't know where to make the the plan so they would just say like okay we have to call off the landing and again oh, when okay. the landing got, when the landing got called off all those passengers they have to stay on board i feel sorry for yeah. them because what you, you don't go to the landing side of course if the weather is really difficult we have to cancel but sometimes it's because it's patient team, they are not so professional. So, you know, if you are not professional, you are not allowed to drive Zodiac. So they don't have enough mm. experienced staff to drive Zodiac, especially to uh, South Georgia, because South Georgia, all the landing is open sea. So it's, it's more difficult than uh, landing inside the bay, because inside the bay, okay. the ocean is more calm, but open sea, 
the water, sea water is really rough. So it, it really needs more experience or like a senior uh, expedition team staff to work. So okay. I enjoy I enjoy working with more senior uh, staff because I have to say I can drive Zodiac, but I'm not allowed to drive Zodiac in South Georgia. Yeah, and I, I love mm. Kim Penguin. So that's a reason I folk, <laughs> I mostly I working with Poseidon because first of all I can go to North Pole because it's around the world right now. It's only two company can operate North Pole tour. And then Poseidon is one of the company. Yeah, so that's a reason mm. I, I really enjoy working with uh, Poseidon, not any other company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jim, really what you make, uh, what you said makes sense. Uh. I mean, um, because Poseidon is so focused on the polar region, you know, they really are the experts. Like what you say, you make the trip there all the way. You do not want to because of unprofessional behavior. Uh, and say, you yeah. know the experts not knowing where to land you cancel the landing i mean canceling the landing yeah. is very easy but you're disappointing hundreds of passengers who probably yeah, save true. an entire lifetime for this trip you know yeah so and i have okay. also men um I yeah. go yeah. ahead sorry what do you say oh it's and uh, the other thing is uh more and more cruise company they offer the trip to antarctica because it's a big market now mm. so i i constantly uh, uh get the email from cruise company they ask me sylvie do you have a mandarin staff you can introduce to us see everyone's looking for experience uh, uh staff right now but again there's not so many uh staff enough it's not enough for the market so i remember one time i joined one expedition team and then they asked me to mm -hmm. go on board to train their mandarin speaking staff when i got on board yes. i found out half of my colleagues they never been to antarctica even include the western colleague they never is their a first time in antarctica so when we went to the landing site i have to say oh my god it's not only the guests, they didn't know uh, what's a rule. Some of my my uh, my colleagues, they broke the rule. They just did something so oh. wrong. And I was like, what? And I told the expedition leaders, I, well, we are not allowed to do that. It's not the guest, it's our team member that did the something wrong. And the, my, my expedition team leader at that time, at the company, he was saying like, uh, okay what can we do right now sylvie they already did yeah to me it's really okay. disappointing yeah yeah so that's why yeah so thankfully you're there yeah okay so we are just touching on the comments on facebook that we have yeah, the first one sure. uh first question is by may fong she's asking what is the temperature at the landing okay so in yeah. antarctica i have to say normally the weather is between zero degree to five degree if it's five degree mm. and sunny, you will feel it's like a ten degree or even more. It's you it will you will get sweaty when you working yeah. at the landing site. Yeah. So as soon as okay. there's no wind, you nobody you don't feel that cold. You will still have your pack up, but you feel I have to say because you were working at the landing site because it's really mm. big. You have to walk around. Yes. Right. So you will see earlier the picture. You can see our. Uh, guests, they always take off their parka at the yeah, landing site. Right. Yeah. So for the temperature, okay. it's a, in between zero to five, but it's not really okay. like what we think. It's cold. No, it's not that cold. Okay. So another question is by Cheryl, because I think you shared a lot of nice oh. pictures just now, right? Yeah. So she's asking, do we have to bring those Zoom professional cameras to take pictures of the penguin? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, you have to bring professional camera. Okay. I have to say because most of the camera I saw there, they are professional. Yeah. They are quite like really expensive. But even you don't bring any camera, don't forget your eyes. Your eyes mm. is camera. Your brain it's a memory card. Because many yeah, times I saw our I saw our guests, they are so focused on their tiny little screen and they really didn't see what happened around them. So again, we go into the nature place, they are not circus. 
So those animals, they were just doing everything everywhere. So if you only mm. focus on the tiny little screen, you really lost the chance to discover other place. So again, professional camera, it's good to have, but you also, it's okay, it's not necessary, yeah. but I would say it's, it's better you bring the professional camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you have to have a balance. You have to have yeah. a balance of uh, observing nature and then quickly catching a few shots here and there, but don't let your time be preoccupied by your camera. Yeah. Right? A second. What's that? We were all, okay, this is a ship and this is USB. Uh -huh. So <laughs> okay. we, on board, we have our professional uh, photographer. So we will share mm. all the picture and the video we took to all our guests. Oh, okay. We will, we will put everything, include the menu, include the daily program, include the list of what kind of animal you see, everything here and the photo oh, video great. in this uh, small USB. And then we provide them yeah. as a gift free okay. for our guests. Oh, that's good. And yeah. it's, it's only for your trip. It's only for that trip. So it's really like okay. a personal memory. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> very thoughtful of Poseidon. Okay. Uh, okay, so the question, right? Just now you're showing one photo uh, about snow yeah. hiking. Hiking. Yeah. So uh, Snowy Dia is asking whether does everyone have to do this snow hiking and is it suitable for everyone also? Okay. Um, it's, it's not really like a hiking. So it's two things. One is you are mm. allowed to walk around in the landing site by yourself. Cause we will tell you where is the border. You are not allowed to cross a border, but landing site is really big. That's why I say hiking, but actually you can just walk around. Right. But we do provide uh. some professional hiking, which is, uh, like two hour or like, uh, even three okay. hour those hiking you really we, we have a different label so if you you can decide mm. if you want to join those uh, professional hiking or not you decide by yourself okay yeah so it's not like uh, you have to but you can All decide right. if you want to join us or not yeah okay okay that's good so cheryl has another question just now you, you showed one scene about oh. the snow camping yeah, yeah, it's an awesome experience, but she was wondering whether would there be any chance of getting attacked by wildlife? Luckily, so far, no. But uh, <laughs> again, okay. it's not only during the camping. I have to say, if yes. I remember earlier, I mentioned in February, most of the animals, mm. they will change their fur. So during that time, yes. they are quite sensitive and aggressive. Mm. So if you you didn't know their uh, behavior so you kind of like uh, you touch their uh borderline then you might yes. get attacked so that's why we always okay. teach you how to read their behavior yes. and plus we have our staff on board uh, at the landing site we will yeah. always check we will always check ah, but again okay. we are okay. the guest we are the guest we are not the Please that's right. be that's polite true. to our animal. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Okay, another question by Snowy Girl. She's asking yeah. because you shared a lot about the meals on served on board. Yeah. Um, she's asking how many meals are covered in a day? Everything. So you have and a every single meal. Okay. Yes. So you have an early breakfast, you have a regular breakfast, you have a lunch, you have an afternoon tea, you have a dinner. And then there's 24 hour homemade cookie and then also the oh. coffee, different kind of tea, because we, our expansion team, we are, uh, I would say our base in Germany. So we have a lot of mm. uh, selection of a German Herbert tea. So coffee, tea, uh. hot chocolate, and also the hot water machine. It's 24 hour provide. Oh, that so, sounds really nice. I think you, you can never go hungry. You yeah. will never go hungry. So many options. Because many Asian guests, I don't know where what kind of information they have before. So they usually bring lots of instant noodle and snack to the to the yes. uh, ship. Then and after like twenty days after, they always give me a big box 
inside more <laughs> okay. instant noodle because they say Sylvie, you are like a tiny little girl. I'm not tiny little girls, but they always say like Sylvie, you are tiny little girl. You work in the Antarctica. It's really like poor of you. Like we worry about you. You have to eat Chinese food. So they <laughs> for the instant noodle. I don't okay. eat instant noodle. <laughs> so I just give to my colleague. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about uh, feel hungry. No. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, another question by Cheryl. Um, she's yeah. wondering about the Drake Passage okay. crossing because she heard that it can be an unbearable experience. Uh, so will the ship actually be walking throughout the time? Is it true? Yeah, it's not all the time, I have to say. Yeah, it's uh, it really depends okay. on the weather. And it, it's now, I have to say, it's like a... 60%, 70% you will, you will get like uh, some okay. rough rough thing and yeah. then uh, okay. 20% is fine. Sometimes we were joking ah. it's like a Drake Lake because it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, okay, so it will be like Liu Chiba. So another 20% you might really have like crazy. Yeah. But again, yeah. it's experience. You know, if you don't have that kind of like a dramatic what kind of story you can share you know it's also the, <laughs> the story you can share to your friends Ooh. yeah but it's not all the time yeah. no worry okay okay that's that's a relief to hear then uh we have our audience faustina she's asking you whether is your company <laughs> hiring <laughs> i think you entice her with all the lovely stories that you shared earlier on <laughs> you know it's always uh, happening yeah I have to say, like, uh, okay. it's not only uh, our company. I, I, earlier I mentioned, is also other exploitation thing company or crews. They asked me if I have a, a Mandarin speaking staff I can introduce. But again, no matter which uh, company you work for, please choose a company who really protect nature. Don't choose uh, like the company yeah. who just come to Antarctica to make money. That's true. That's true. So Faustina has another question for you. She's asking, yeah. what's the traveling time? from embarking the cruise to arriving at the landing site. I think I think uh, what she meant is once you disembark the ship, right? And yeah. then you have to take the Zodiac to the landing yes. site. Usually, Usually like what's the traveling time? One to two minutes. It's not too long. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just one a very short minutes. journey. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just a short oh. journey because it's a shuttle. It's just a shuttle. Ah, okay. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Mostina is like sharing that she can speak very good Mandarin. <laughs> so we probably that, will hear basic, from her okay. very soon. I have to say now <laughs> we really in we we hire the people who is not only Mandarin speaking. Of course, it's Mandarin speaking and English speaking. Those two are the basic. But if you can speak yes. the third European language, because our team mm. we have a lot of guests came from Europe. So, like, uh, if you can speak a certain language, that would be good. And you have to have a, a boat license, power boat license. Ah, That's okay. a must. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so I think I've covered all the questions asked by Perfect. the audience already. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me invite Cheryl back online. Okay. Yeah, I think if anyone uh, has a more question, you can always ask uh, Mabel and Cheryl, <laughs> and then I can always answer <laughs> yeah. after. I mean, I, I really you like to more share. Than yeah, more than See, I got so much questions to ask Sylvie. <laughs> I'm so excited <laughs> about the trip. As, as you were presenting, I was like, wow. I mean, you, you can't see me, but I was like, wow, this is awesome. So beautiful. Look at all the cutie penguins. <laughs> I have to say, like, uh, because the season is already starting now. So some of my, my colleague already in Antarctica. And you just uh, this mm. time, because I just got my, my baby. My baby is just one year old. So I really have to spend time with her. Otherwise, I will be in Antarctica as well right now. Mm. Ah, okay. Wonderful. Yeah. So I yeah. hope everyone, after this travel talk, you can become yes. the Polar Region Ambassador. So it doesn't matter you are going to Antarctica <laughs> this season, next year. Please 
protect the nature because I want my my kids when they go into Antarctica in the future they can see exactly yes. like what I have right now. Yeah, it that's really needs everyone's help. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. that's a very it's very powerful message. It is everybody's responsible to protect the nature, not for ourselves, but for the next generation and all the future generation. Yeah, it's true. It's true. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sylvie. Okay. Thank you so much for Thank your presentation. Thank you so much. Sylvie. Really, heard a lot yeah. about my topic tonight. Thank you, everyone. Indeed, and yeah, and thank you, everyone else, for tuning in to listen to Sylvie's exciting story. Uh, we will end our session for Wing Nights with Wonder Girls uh, oh, now. Our uh, next session. Yes. Are you want to take a picture? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. See ya. So, See you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Good night. Bye. See ya. Bye. Next Wing Nights Wonder Girls. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye. 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 <laughs> Okay.